Friends, what's going down? Welcome to another live stream. And you know what? We spend a lot of time. This is called the SPTV News Live part of the channel. I figured we'd lighten it up a bit. As you guys know that follow the channel, we talk about uh, some pretty dark stuff, not least because we talk about my experience growing up in the Scientology cult, um, exposing the human traffic slash mafia s cult of Scientology on a deep level other cults that are related and the wider crazier world at large so it'd be nice to kind of lighten things up once in a while and do something a little more superfluous and not um not as dark and what could be more vacuous irrelevant and superfluous than the culture of celebrity so i'm gonna we're gonna go through some celebrities who almost got lured into scientology and this is an article that came out yesterday um exploring some of that and some of these actually surprise me, but um, we're going to jump off and riff off of some of this material that's in here. And like I said, keep it a little bit uh, more chill today. So who do we have in the house? Goldie, have you made it or are you on Mitch's channel at the moment? I think Mitch is also doing a live as we as we speak. There you guys are. What's up, Mark? What's up, caveman? Okay, so let's get into this, shall we? So, so Sophia Vergara, Robert Irwin, and more celebrities who were allegedly almost recruited to Scientology. When people talk about Scientology, they typically talk about either the controversy surrounding the church or the celebrities attached to it. They are quite passionate members of the church in the A-list world like John Travolta and Tom Cruise. However, New reports indicate that may not be the case anymore. And let's just go ahead and nip that in the butt right away. I swear every other month they're saying that Tom Cruise is going to leave Scientology. And the evidence, quote unquote, that they have for that is that he supposedly, you know, hasn't been visiting the East Grinstead area or what's known as St. Hill. So a couple days ago, this hit the news. New reports allege that Tom Cruise's relationship with Scientology may have taken an unexpected turn. This always comes out, by the way. This is my guess. He had a, sh a movie that bombed recently. And every time something bad happens in Tom Cruise's life, uh, PR-wise or press-wise, I think that he puts his publicist out there to kind of counter that with suspicions that he might be leaving Scientology when he's doing anything fucking but. Okay, so Tom Cruise alleged... Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Okay, so... This is why I don't get excited when they say the end of Scientology and stupid shit like this. New reports allege that Tom Cruise's relationship with Scientology may have taken an unexpected turn. Despite being known as the golden boy of Scientology for literally decades now, new reports indicate that Tom Cruise's relationship with the controversial church may not be what people think it is in 2023. According to The Mirror, um, oh, well, there you go. The Mission Impossible star may have reportedly stopped visiting the UK Scientology headquarters despite being in the UK for around three years while filming his latest movies. Cruise has been seen around Birmingham and Cotswolds, but nowhere near the headquarters in the multi-year stay he's had in the country. Now there's a Church of Scientology building in central London, but Cruise hasn't been entering or near there as well. Again, the reason for that would be um, the only reason he would go to the headquarters in East Grinstead or the, or the like, because he's an OT8, which means he's at the top of the bridge. He's done a ton of training, so he's not just going to roll in there to do uh, random training. Plus, he's a celebrity, so he'd probably be wheeled into the Celebrity Center or at Flag, which is uh, their place in Clearwater, Florida. The only reason he would be there is if the midget puts on events. That would be the cult leader, David Miscavige, in East Grinstead, and I'm sure he'll be at the next one. They just haven't been doing them because of the pandemic over the last few years. Continuing on. When people talk about Scientology, they typically talk about either the controversy surrounding the church or the celebrities attached to it. They are, okay, so we covered that. Um, and there has been a slew of celebrities who escaped the church like Leah Remini and that 70s show alum, Laura Perpon. However, we're going to talk about the celebrities that nobody seems to talk about when mentioning Scientology. The ones that were almost allegedly recruited into the con controversial church. By the way, like I said, we're going to riff off of some of these things so I can talk about my own experiences with some of these people 
Laura Prepon was in my acting class. I think we talked about her on the series. And I talked about this with Mitch Brisker. There's three acting classes, or there were, that recruit Scientology, uh, recruit people into being Scientologists. One of them um, is the Beverly Hills Playhouse. It was run by Milton Casales. It's since been taken over by an apostate, somebody who left Scientology. So that is no longer a Scientology front group, thank God. Actor Bobby Lyons still um, teaches and a lot of people go there. That's where I went. That's where I met Laura. And um, I found her to be quite arrogant, just like the little Masterson kids and all those people that were in that class looking back. I was also arrogant too, because like I said, Scientology makes you into a secondary sociopath slash narcissist. But even then, I at least kept my ethics in and I was like freaked out by how haughty um, some of these celebrities actually were. Uh, continuing on. Okay, so here's some of the celebrities that some of you guys will definitely know. I mean, I'm sure you know the, the first one up, which is Elvis, but some of them were surprising, man. Think about it, the higher up, the higher up Scientologists in the A-list world have been alleged to be recruiters trying to get other celebrities to join the church. Quite a, few, quite a few celebrities have spoken out about their experience of almost being recruited, such as taking acting classes or having one of the bigger names attached to the church trying to personally recruit them. That's how Tom Cruise does it. And then with other celebrities, it's a bit of a mystery. Either way, there are a lot more celebrities than you think that have allegedly almost been recruited, from Sofia Vergara to Robert Irwin. From Patrick Swayze to Seth Rogen. Check out which celebrities were allegedly almost recruited. Okay, so then we have Elvis Presley. If you guys know the story behind him, allegedly, he didn't last very long because this is what happened. Even though many of the Presley family are practicing Scientologists, and we know what happened with Lisa Marie, RIP, Elvis Presley was no fan of the controversial church. According to Janet Reitman's book, Inside Scientology, Elvis was not the biggest fan of Scientology. In fact, the one time he was convinced to go to the Scientology Center, probably, probably the Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles, he left the building irate and screaming. Specifically, Reitman claims that Elvis left screaming, fuck those people, there's no way I'm ever getting involved with that son of a bitch group, all they want is my money, fuck them. So that's the quick Elvis story. It's kind of interesting that he didn't get recruited, um, particularly with Scientology running so deep in the veins of the uh, Presley clan. How many of you guys can recognize who this is um, before we even secretly reveal the name? Let's see what's going on in here in the chat. Nasty used to be an Elvis impersonator. I can throw you a link, bro, and you can jump on here and give us your best Elvis if you want. Let me know. <laughs> Little sister, don't you kiss me one more. Oh, that's nice. Hey, what's up? Creepy. Caveman with the uh, lightning bolt. Carrying on. If you guys don't know, that's Sophia. I can't even pronounce her last name, but I'm going to show you a little six degrees of her um, in my own life shortly. Sophia Vergara. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. Because Sophia Vergara was linked to Tom Cruise, many believe that Cruise tried to allegedly recruit her into the church as a means of making their relationship more serious. He allegedly tried to audition her to be his wife. And as many know, Scientology ended up being a deal breaker for Vagara and she ended the relationship. Okay. Before we get to the next one, I want to show you something on uh, Sophia. She's a Catholic gal and she didn't want to give up her. Um, she didn't want to give up her own faith to be sucked into Tom Cruise's faith. So check this out. Tom Cruise allegedly, it's not allegedly, he did hold auditions. I'm sure you know about the, uh, you know, that's how he basically got Katie Holmes, um, Nazanin Bonyadi, who we'll talk about a little bit, etc. So he did, he does actually hold auditions, although they're not under the auspices of auditioning to be his wife, obviously. It's with the precursor of this might be a big movie that you're auditioning for that stars Tom Cruise. Maybe it's a Mission Impossible sequence or heaven help you, um, Dead Reckoning Part 2. <laughs> okay, so um, Tom Cruise allegedly auditioned this then newcomer to be his wife. We'll just black him out there. With an A-lister like Tom Cruise, so heavily embroiled in the controversial Church of Scientology, it's no wonder there's so many accounts and reports about how he navigates the dating world. 
Reports and insider claims have alleged for years that the Mission Impossible star, quote, auditions potential new flames. And this resurfaced account is making the rounds over the internet again. We'll get right to the point. Do you remember when Cruz and Sofia Vergara were briefly in a relationship back in the mid 2000s? Yeah, us neither. But let's take a look back at this brief and hot and heavy fling. So back in 2005, Will Smith, more about him later, introduced Vergara to Cruz at a pre-Oscar party. And soon after, Cruz called up Vergara to invite her to an upcoming party. They were pictured together leaving Jerry's famous deli on February 22nd, 2005 in Los Angeles, California. It's a great deli, by the way. I live out here in Los Angeles. It's currently uh, raining like cats and dogs, and it's 8 o'clock. What time is it your guys' time? What's the weather like? And uh, how are you doing out there? <laughs> so there they are at the uh, famous Jerry's Deli. But according to the New York Post, Vagar was dazzled by Tom's megawatt smile and amused by the blizzard of phone calls, flowers, and chocolates that followed their first meeting. Shit. Is that by? A skip? However... The Modern Family alum's alleged deal breaker to the romance was how he tried to convert her to Scientology. That's definitely like uh, a deal breaker, not something to say on the first date. Like many of his past relationships, he allegedly auditioned his partners, both in and out of the religion, to see if they would be as devoted as he was. Bagara definitely wasn't. The budding romance soon went sideways when the Catholic act actress gave her thumbs down to Cruz's Scientology beliefs. It soon became clear that she was being auditioned for the biggest role of her life, Mrs. Tom Cruise. And this is right before she kind of got famous and therefore was vulnerable. And you could perhaps see why that might be uh, your meal ticket or very tempting, even if you don't like Scientology initially. Maybe you can make yourself like it. It was made clear that if she took the part, she would have to renounce her Catholic faith and convert. She sincerely believed that she would be struck down by God and burn in hell if she joined Scientology. Well, she uh, wasn't too far off on that. That's quite, quite right. <laughs> Blue, what's up, my friend? 8 p.m. here, 80 degrees. Sky smoky from nearby fires. Yeah, they seem to be everywhere. I'm sure you guys heard about the fire um, in Hawaii, which seems to be done by Dew. I can't actually say the real thing. Otherwise, they'll probably flag this fucking video. We are lucky here. Truly. Nice to hear. Creepy giving a shout out to uh, Cave, Caveman. Okay, so continuing on. Oh, let me show you something with uh, with regards to that. Let me close some tabs here. By the way, guys, we shouldn't actually have any delay anymore. The camera's all fixed. You know, everything should be fine. We shouldn't be buffering videos. It only took forever to uh, figure out, but I think we uh, we got it. Here's a little six degrees of Sophia. Actress Sofia Vergara and actor Joe Mangianello are divorcing after seven years of marriage. Mangianello, I know I'm not pronouncing that right, filed for divorce from Vergara on Wednesday, citing irreconcilable differences. According to Co okay, so he just um, divorced her. So maybe we'll Tom Cruise will swing back around. One of the first acting jobs that I got was op was acting opposite Joe, and it was like the equivalent of acting uh, next to plywood. Here's a little clip from that and a little six degrees and show you how small Hollywood really is. <laughs> it's ingenious, really. One of my best, if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. That's Joe right there. I remember when I met him, he had just done a little small part on what the fuck was it like? Superman or something that that movie with Tobey Maguire and even then before he was kind of made it he was super unwilling to run the lines very cocky and like I said it was like acting against a wooden board um, I've seen him since then in things like True Blood and stuff and he seems like he's actually gotten uh, quite good was that because when it blows right the residue looks like a natural gas explosion meaning Meaning, investigators will just think there's a problem with the house's gas line. Duh. <laughs> so how do I activate it? This is so genius, man. You're gonna love it. <laughs> All right, here. Put the lid on. Now, look at me. Normally, that. 
now activate the bomb, right? And then, when you take off the top. No, stop! Stop, stop! <laughs> it's not funny, man. Hey, it was, man. Your face is like, whoa. Don't mess with me. Just relax, buddy. Man, you guys like you cannot take a joke. <laughs> Now the bomb is activated. Do not let anyone open this unless you wish to destroy them, okay? And I suggest that you make sure that you're out of the area as well. It's fine. It's one nice society, and then I'm more than happy to skip. Pleasure doing business with you. All right, happy bombing. Fuck, I just realized my fucking mic was, uh, yeah, how much did we miss? Okay, my mic was fucking, let me go back a little because I accidentally muted the fucking thing. So, um, damn it, well, I already closed that tab, but what I was talking about, what I read was how David Miscavige, um, let me just do this real quick, stand by. I don't know if you could see it or not, but what I read was how David Miscavige wanted to make Tom's fantasy come true. And he um, basically had Sea Org members build, um, you know, plow the desert so he could have this fantasy. There was a mudslide and uh, it fucked up their bungalow. And because of that, he blamed it on the Sea Org staff and they had to work 16 hour days and probably do all kinds of uh, punishment and shit due to that. So continuing on. 
keep the chat up for a minute because you guys can probably see that okay so that's david beckham so he basically skipped out on that next up i'm sure you guys know who this man is brad pitt he got in via juliette lewis still said to be a scientologist although she's always been kind of a rebel scientologist she takes to it when it suits her i think she's done the purif that's the drug rehabilitation program the fake one dangerous one i believe she's done that many times i think she finally got up to the state of clear but just like Danny Masterson, uh, Laura Propon, and all these uh, kind of celebrity actors, they never really move up the bridge too much. That's what I was freaking trying to do. They um, go very slowly, and I was always jealous because I was like, God damn it, you guys have the money to do this, and you're not even taking this shit seriously. Okay, so the next one was Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's time with Scientology is a bit more confusing than others. He dabbled in the church for around three years in the early 1990s after his girlfriend at the time, Juliette Lewis, introduced him. Per page six, he quote, twinned with a 15-year-old girl, a 15-year-old girl or the 15-year-old girl. Was he uh, older than her and dating her illegally? He twinned with a 15-year-old girl for up to five hours a day in a hot sauna during purification rituals and did bull baiting sessions. What they're referring to there is that he did the purification rundown. That's a sweat lodge, a pseudo drug rehabilitation program that I was telling you about. And if he was bull baiting, he would have done some form of a communication course, as we've covered that before. That's where you basically try to make nothing of the other person, push their buttons until they no longer react. Carrying on. You guys can probably hear the rain pouring down. Freaking love it. All right. This dude was, um, well, let's see here. This is one of his more kind of recent recruits. In a recent report, in July 2023, Tom Cruise tried to recruit Robert Irwin after meeting him at the Sydney premiere of Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, per Women's Day, MSM. And let's see a little bit about, um, about who Robert Irwin is, because you guys might not know who he is. And there have been reports that he tried to get him in recently. So they're talking about Tom Cruise. According to Women's Day Magazine, Tom wants to recruit zookeeper Robert Irwin, 19. Jesus, leave the, leave the lad alone, man. He's only 19. You're going to ruin his whole life. Into Scientology after meeting him at the Sydney premiere of Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1 last week. Tom is apparently a longtime fan of Robert and sees huge potential in the only son of the late crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. So you probably know him from Crocodile Hunter. He was taken aback by how much Robert looks like his dad, an insider told the magazine on Monday. And there he is with the cute little koala and shit. But Tom's just not interested in recruiting him for the religion. Of course not. He wants to work with Rob and thinks he could help his production company break into the TV streaming market. Again, that's, um, ah, oh, fuck. I forgot to show that. <laughs> God damn it, man. I ended up just reading that. Well, I just read to you what it was, but, um, this is what this guy looks like. And he's the crocodile hunter um, son. Okay. Still trying to juggle this shit, my friends. But one of these days, soon, I will get it. Who has the vibe? Er, Mr. Irwin? Yeah, Rob totally does and also has that vibe. I guess I'm not following along in the chat. Okay, so carrying on. Hang on, I gotta share this tab. Okay, there's a uh, young Irwin. Stay away from him, Tom. This one I had no idea about. Share. Um, another almost Tom Cruise recruit was his ex, Share. Cher said in previous interviews how she didn't understand the religion despite her ex-lover's involvement with the church and his alleged want for her to be the female face of Scientology. Um, and here's what uh, here's another article on Cher and how that kind of went down. When you first think of Tom Cruise being on the hunt for a woman, well, first of all, you don't. 
Chances are you think about him finding a new lady to love. It's no secret that he has a thing for his co-stars, that he has certain standards a lot of women in Hollywood refuse to meet. For those that don't know, the Mission Impossible star is basically the golden child. Yes, we know that. There they are together. She looks amazing, by the way, with blonde hair. Within the past few years, Scientology has been under the microscope with its controversy such as multiple stars leaving and being vocal about their time there, like Leah Remini and Danny Masterson, uh, sexual assault conviction. And apparently the deaths of prominent former and current members like Lisa Marie Presley and Kirstie Alley made the search harder. It cannot be understated how shattered every single member of Scientology has been by Lisa Marie and Kirstie's sudden death. God damn it, I hate all these ads. The insider said to New Idea magazine, it's quite unprecedented as put to, it, is, it is quite unprecedented and has put Tom and the controllers in a position where they need to pull the church through some extremely challenging times. That's an understatement. I don't know why it keeps throwing the stupid ad shit up. As previously stated, the two alleged forerunners of this position are Priscilla and Cher. Priscilla, okay. Priscilla has been at the Church of Scientology since her ex-husband. Yeah, we know what happened. So sad. Now Cher, that's one can... That one's confusing considering Cher isn't a Scientologist. Her ex-husband Sony Bono was one, but she disputed all the claims that she joined back in 2008 per access online. She may be a contender because of her ex-husband ties, along with the fact that she briefly dated Cruz in 1985. So as you guys may know, Sonny was a Scientologist and he died in a horrible skiing accident running some intermediate run and somehow veered off and hit a tree and uh, died a tragic death. So who is the next celebrity? Okay, I'm sure you guys know this guy. Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld previously revealed on What the Fuck with Mark Marin podcast that he took a course on Scientology. I did do a course in Scientology in like 75. I think he actually did more than one course. He said, well, he quote, found it interesting. He decided to go against it. Okay, before we bring up the next one, do you guys know who that is? Before we bring up her... Let me show you a little something on uh, Jerry Seinfeld. This is why we have in the music in the background. Hopefully it's not on too loud, but it does take some time to switch between these and I don't want people to be bored out of their mind. Jerry Seinfeld addresses Scientology affiliation claims. What's the deal with cults? Not much, apparently. Jerry Seinfeld again addressed Bobcat Goldthwait popularized claims. He's a Scientologist on the What the Fuck podcast. I think he's actually listed, so it's not really speculation. The Church of Scientology. Okay, let's see here. After speaking on how comedy alone can be, quote, spiritually satisfying, Seinfeld, who notes that he doesn't consider himself a follower of any religion, was asked why everybody says that he was once a Scientologist. Because he was. I did do a course in Scientology in like 75 in New York, Seinfeld said around 64 minutes in the what the fuck discussion with Marin. Quote, found it very interesting, never pursued it. And while Seinfeld never got deeper into his Scientology bag, he did, as he explained to Marin, take away something of value. Quote, an emphasis on ethical behavior, which I liked. The emphasis on that was a big thing. I would say again, before they hit you with the space opera and the crazy Xenu shit and stuff, it does seem like it's sensible tools for life. I did feel like I was becoming more ethical with their conditions, formulas and stuff that, that they introduced you to at the beginning. And I can definitely see why uh, he would say that. And that's the cheese that gets you in slowly where it's basic tools for life. Now try a little bit of auditing. Now we'll bait and switch where you have to be an auditor. Now we'll bait and switch again where we hit you with the space opera shit. It gets crazy only as you go up, but the initial outer layer of Scientology, like most destructive cults, is very appealing and seems to initially actually help you. All right, so I think we covered... Oh, let me show you this too. Jerry Seinfeld um, since spoke out about Scientology, shall we say, 
by um, featuring it in uh, in Seinfeld in 1989 with this quick little quip. Get out! <laughs> I, I didn't mean anything by it. I don't even know L. Ron Hubbard. I, I didn't know you were with that group. It's the same fucking... Okay, this is a little five-minute uh, video that I threw together. Nobody watched it because I had to re-upload it after like multiple YouTube channels. So this is uploaded at the beginning. But we'll watch this at the end. It's only about five minutes and it kind of hooks on to what we're talking about here. Scientology featured in movies and TV. And you guys might know that that's Joaquin Phoenix in The Master. All right, carrying on. Can you guys guess who the next one is? That's Jerry Seinfeld. This is Brandy. Another one I had no idea I had any brush with Scientology. It was brief. Per Express, Brandy allegedly took a few classes, but after her crash in 2006, she decided to stop entirely. Let me see if I have anything on Brandy. Okay, there's actually a little bit more to say about her, but hers was so brief, it's probably not worth commenting on too much, and we can move on to the next one. Okay, Seth Rogen. <laughs> By the way, I did actually, you meet a lot of people in Hollywood, right? So even though I hadn't made it yet, I did uh, meet a lot of celebrities just being out here in LA, trying to go to the clubs or whatever. And I did meet Seth Rogen and shook his hand in a, some a movie premiere that he was after party or something in Santa Monica. And he was on the second floor and he was like in the back with all of his buddies. And of course he was um, smoking marijuana, as you would expect. And I remember being like a... Um, like I said, I was an in ethics, um, trying to be a good boy Scientologist. So I would judge people like him when I would see the, all these evil Hollywood people and how dare him smoke weed and all that. He's, he's causing his reactive mind to activate and all this crazy shit. It looks funny. Um, looking back at it now and how many opportunities I missed by not partaking in drugs, maybe here and there, uh, or marijuana at least. And again, I was just, a uh, put off by that um anyways carry on so here's seth rogan involvement albeit brief seth rogan in a 2021 appearance on the howard stern show actually he wasn't involved but check this out when he appeared on the howard stern show in 2021 seth rogan revealed that tom cruise tried to talk him into joining scientology back in 2006 this is fucking funny this is definitely worth showing so check out this. Give me a time to check out the chat and see how you guys are doing as well. Seth tells this great story in the book how he gets a call that Tom Cruise is now thinking he wants to do comedy. The real comedy is what happened when you went to see Tom Cruise. First of <laughs> well, all, <I'm> <laughs> this is the movie. <laughs> I love that you had a pee so bad that you peed into a Snapple bottle for, to meet yes. with Tom Cruise. I, I, I stopped halfway up the driveway, kind of in the woods uh, above Sunset Boulevard, and I peed in a Snapple bottle in my car, um, and then I uh, sealed the bottle and, and left it there and went on to have a very absurd meeting with, with Tom Cruise, but uh, to get to the end of it, yeah, so then as I was leaving the meeting, I was snaking back down the driveway, and I as I was passing the exact spot that I peed in, I noticed a red light in the woods and looked and there was a security camera literally pointed exactly where I was being oh, in the snow. I, I felt your pain on that one. I love it. <laughs> but the meeting was so bizarre. We had been meeting with him for a long time, a few hours. We've been talking and he was and he's and again, I say like I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan. Like I fucking love Tom Cruise. Like I see every Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> like right. I go to theaters. I can't wait. He that man is determined to die on camera for our <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> and this meeting, is, by the way, was at the time when he was married to Katie Holmes and he just yeah, had so a baby with her, right. Surrey. Right. That was right when this meeting was. Was like it was at the peak of Tom Cruise. Like, I mean, I use the word mania in a very literal sense. I think in this in this situation. So yeah, we met with him for hours, and not a few hours into the meeting, he goes, "This Scientology stuff comes up. How weird he's looked in the press lately. Kind of how, uh, yeah, just how strange yeah, but, in but general he's, he's said, coming across." But he said, what you said in the book was fascinating. He said, 
the press is trying to make me look crazy because I'm costing the pharmaceutical industry so much money because he's yes. against, um, he's you know, against pharmaceuticals. Psycho and then, yeah, the word goes, and it's like with Scientology. He said, if you let me just tell you what it was really about, if you let me just give me like 20 this minutes. This is some funny shit, man. This guy is funny. I don't like too many of his movies just because he kind of plays the same stoner over and over, but he is funny, man. This is a hilarious story. So, like, really just tell you what it was about? You would say, no fucking way. No fucking way. I remember being like, I, I remember, like, the wording was, I was like, is that a good thing to be saying? Is that a <laughs> yeah, bad thing that to mean? be saying? And I remember saying, so like, if, I, if you let me tell you about Jewish people, you would say, no fucking way, man. No fucking way. <laughs> um, and then I remember there was this very, like, loaded moment where he says this to us. If you just gave me, like, 20 minutes to tell you about this, you would say, no fucking way. And me and Jen are looking at each other, and I'm like, is he going to bite? Am I going to bite? Are we, how, can we come out of this? Are we strong enough to have <laughs> do this to us and not be converted i don't know if i am i, I i'm a weak i generally a weak-willed weak-minded person i would assume on the grand scale of people i could if they got him they, how, what chance do i have you know um and thank god judd was like eh, i think we're good like let's just talk about movies and stuff like that I was like, right oh, woof, dodge that bullet yeah. god damn it man that is funny Okay, so back to the celebrities. We have a few more to go. Um, oh, um, okay, let me put on the music again. Again, guys, I'm taking your notes. I'm trying to keep it real low. It just helps to drown out the rain and the computer feedback sounds and such, and it helps chill me out talking about these kind of subjects. So settle in as we go to the next one. Can you tell just by the eyeballs who that is? Again, another one that I had no idea I had any brush with Scientology. That's Ricky Martin. You guys remember him? In an old article from the Herald Tribune, it was alleged that Ricky Martin dabbled in the church while on a religious request or quest, sorry. And here you can see it. He actually talks briefly about, let me pull this up here. He kind of talks about that a little bit in this paragraph at the bottom. Right here it says, as he cultivates his sexy image, Martin also is on a spiritual quest. So far he has explored Catholicism, Scientology, Judaism, Hinduism, and currently Buddhism. Very interesting. That's Ricky Martin. Next up we have, oh man, this one sucked to hear about. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know who this is, right? Luckily, he also got kind of in and out. But, um, you know, it's not uncommon, just so you guys know, for almost everybody in Hollywood to get hit up about Scientology at some point, because, you know, I was um, trying to recruit people and talk about it once I got to know them and stuff. And somebody like Tom Cruise or Jenna Elfman, who was a super hardcore Scientologist, when she was on her show, Dharma and Greg, she would pimp Scientology out to anybody she could talk to in, in Hollywood. So there's a whole crew of people that are very dedicated um, to recruiting people. And my whole goal was to make it in acting so I could then prophetize and get the rest of the world into Scientology through fame. I'm just telling you guys how it is, man. I'm not proud of any of this. I do feel like a different person than when I was living, than you know, growing up most of my life because I got out of Scientology and deprogrammed. But it is weird looking back at this shit, man. It, what was going on in my my thought process? I would like dream about getting Johnny Depp in and, and what I was going to say to him. I would even practice lines on how I was going to talk to certain people on set to get them into Scientology if I knew I was working with someone famous or somebody that um, I thought might take to Scientology. Super embarrassing to admit that, but it is what it is. All right. I would never recruit anybody nowadays, just so you know case that isn't clear so patrick swayze had a you know what 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 patrick swayze also reminds me of is um maybe it's a little off topic but sylvester stallone his brother frank stallone is a scientologist um to this day um okay so in lawrence wright's book going clear scientology hollywood and the prison of belief excellent book amazing movie it's alleged Patrick Swayze was almost recruited by none other than John Travolta. 
Next up, do you guys know who that is? I want to give you guys a moment and see if you can guess who that is. Take a guess in the chat. I thought that was Dustin Hoffman at first. <laughs> Frank sang on the road. That's right. That's right, Blow Drill. He sang uh, on the Road to Freedom album, which if you haven't picked up a copy of that, I highly suggest you uh, you pick that up. Anybody know who, who this is? You probably, I don't think you'd guess it. It's not Joe Namath. It's not No Idea. Um, okay, let's just get to it. So this is freaking uh, Leonard Cohen, man. So when you listen to your Cohen records and you listen to this amazing music, some of it was actually based on Scientology, not dissimilar to Manson kind of incorporating it into his songs. In Lawrence Wright's book, Going Clear, Scientology, How Well and Principally, Leonard Cohen, quote, passed through the church and later made references about it in his songs. So um, I'll show you a little bit about his passing phase. I'll turn the music down. So what do we got here? Leonard Cohen's Brief Scientology Interlude. Somehow this doesn't surprise me at all. He's a fascinatingly creative guy, and I can see him experimenting with a new religion. This is from a review of a new Leonard Cohen biography, I'm Your Man. And it turns out she tells us an enormous amount that even I, a Cohen aficionado, didn't know, including exactly how Jewish Cohen's upbringing was. He was steeped in Judaism, and then his religion, his religious exploration included a brief period as a Scientologist. This detail illuminates the line in Cohen's song, Famous Blue Raincoat. I'll link all this in the description box as well as what we cover here. It's a great fucking song. And if you guys want to see some of the material that we covered in here, like I said, always in the description box, everything we talk about in the videos is posted a few hours after the video publishes. This detail illuminates the line in Cohen's uh, song, Famous Blue Raincoat, quote, Did you ever go clear? An explicit reference to Scientology that until now was always opaque to me. And here's a few of the lines where he talks about that. Famous Blue Raincoat. It's four in the morning, the end of December. I'm writing you now just to see if you're better. New York is cold, but I like where I'm living. There's music on Clinton Street all through the evening. I hear that you're building your little house deep in the desert. You're living for nothing now. I hope you're keeping some kind of record. Yes, and Jane came by with a lock of your hair. She said that you gave it to her. That night that you planned to go clear. Did you ever go clear? woo -hoo. It's a great fucking song, man. Sounds like he's out at that time that he's writing that song. And he's reminiscing about a friend who was probably pot committed to uh, going up the bridge to total freedom. After Leonard Cohen, we have. Frickin' Spielberg. Now, this is another one I don't know about. Again, these are kind of tabloidy magazines, so we can't take everything. We have to take it with a grain of salt. But there was a dispute between these two. And undoubtedly, let me give a little bit of backstory here. So Tom Cruise was going bonkers about promoting Scientology. Or I would say around 2000, late 2004, early 2005. This is a great time to be a Scientologist, I remember, because Tom Cruise was out there pimping for it. He was going on national television shows and talking out about psychiatry and how great Scientology was and all this shit. And I was oblivious, man. I thought this was fucking cool. I thought he was a doing a great job as a Scientologist and I wanted to be like him. We talked about this in some of the episodes or whatever, how people would question me at this time because they knew I was a Scientologist and I was so oblivious when they would question me, I would proselytize and I was proud that Tom Cruise was out there speaking like an absolute maniac. And what he did during War of the Worlds, right, right around this time, is he had these fucking yellow tents on set where he would try to get extras to go in there and get a personality test and be introduced to Scientology. And him and Spielberg met a head. Actually, it turned into a whole uh, fiasco where he kind of lost his deal he got rid of his longtime publicist and hired his sister. He basically decided if Hollywood and the public isn't going to accept Scientology, I'm still going to push it through anyways. Fuck all these people. I'm going to do it um, myself. He since kind of groveled on his knees and had to get back in with Spielberg. But um, here's a story kind of behind him. So during the War of the Worlds, he told Tom, dude, shut the fuck up, promote the movie. And... Um, and stop talking about Scientology. And that's when they kind of went at a head. 
In a subreddit on Scientology, users talked about how Steven Spielberg was nearly recruited, but refused. So as you can see here, here's that subreddit. Let me pull it up here. Let me get a better view. Okay, so the story of how Tom Cruise tried and failed to recruit Steven Spielberg to Scientology and how it got really, really ugly. This made the gossip round several years ago, around the time of War of the Worlds, right when Cruise first started to go full miscavige, but for some reason never really hit the mainstream news sites. I'm guessing because of the muscle of Burt Fields, Cruise's attorney, and Spielberg's reticence to go public with a nasty personal feud. In the wake of Going Clear, that's the movie, uh, I thought this would be interesting to newer readers. If you thought Cruise and Scientology were nuts after Gibney's film, you ain't seen nothing yet until you've read this. So here's another little piece of that so we don't have to go into massive detail. But this was one of the upsets that he had. <laughs> As many folks in Hollywood and elsewhere know, there was a rift between Spielberg and Cruise that arose last year during and after their collabor collaboration on War of the Worlds. This was in part because Spielberg felt that Cruz's off-camera antics dinged the film's grosses. Not to mention, like I said, he was bringing yellow tents and shit on um, film sets to recruit extras into Scientology. And there was another issue, as reported this week in The New Yorker. This is a while back. And previously elsewhere, it seems that after Spielberg, in a conversation with Cruz present, raised a psychiatrist who had helped a family member. Oh, no. Representatives from the psychiatrist loathing Church of Scientology staged a protest at that very doctor's office. Although Cruz was said to have assured Spielberg that he was not behind this incident, yeah, right. Well, Miscavige would have been, Cruz acting in accord, and infuriated the director and, perhaps more important, Kate Capshaw, also known as Mrs. Spielberg. For a time, it seems, the Spielbergs waited in vain for the star to explain how exactly those protesters happened to appear at the doctor's office <laughs> okay here's the here's the uh again we only have a few more here and then we'll hit that uh scientology and movies and tv clip at the end it's qu quite funny okay i'm sure you guys kind of know about um jada pinkett smith and will smith's involvement now jada was definitely a scientologist um despite what people say or the rumors she tries to put out she was the more hardcore one. And even though Will was kind of promoting it in a roundabout way um, on chat shows and such when they were into it, he was not really the hardcore Scientologist. Jada apparently wore the pants in the family. She was dedicated to it. She's the one that got the Scientology school kicking off. And he was kind of in the background, basically doing what she says. I don't think uh, Will was ever that involved in Scientology. Okay, back to this. And uh, Jada is just one nasty, nasty creature. Um, Jada Pinkett Smith, her relationship with Scientology has been quite hazy, with many saying that she was an active recruiter and her saying that she was never fully affiliated with the church. That's what she says, but that's not according to people who saw her down at Celebrity Center quite often. I had left the cult by the time she got into it. Some allege, per Gawker, that at one point she and Will Smith founded a school that taught Scientology teachings. Again, that's not alleged. You can look that up. That's a fact. But many claim she and Will left before being fully-fledged members. I'm not even positive that they actually have left. There are Scientologists like this, that will just say that to the press and go under the radar and maybe practice it at home, have an auditor show up to them if they're a celebrity at their home and maybe still practice the auditing, what we call kind of indie Scientology. Um, but just because they leave it publicly doesn't mean that they're necessarily out. And there are people, like I said, where they have an auditor go up to their, you know, Mulholland Drive house and audit them. Well, you'll never hear that they're uh, practicing, quote unquote, Scientologists. Okay, do we have anything on Jada? Okay, let me close some tabs here while you guys are hanging out. Okay, so we'll go down to uh, the one that would logically follow 
which would be Will Smith. He'll always be remembered as the guy that got slapped, staged or not, during the Oscars. Like we said, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith's relationship with Scientology has been confusing. It, their own relationship has probably been confusing to themselves. Remember everything we said before? Well, we'll add to the fact that former church executive Mike Rinder told the Daily Beast that, quote, Will Smith is not a Scientologist. Yeah, I think he's right about that. And was merely someone who tried to be recruited. But again, his wife, um, I would say, definitely was. Let me show you another. Who, who would Tom Cruise possibly be... Um, Recording nowadays. Um, so Scarlett Johansson. Um, I gotta, I gotta give some background on this. When the auditions were held, when Tom Cruise was looking for a wife, this is around 2004, 2005, if I can remember correctly. The reason I remember this is because Nazanin Bonyadi, who ended up becoming Tom Cruise's mate briefly. Um, she was in my acting class. She was in Bobby Lyons acting class. I did know her fairly well. And we were also on the OT committee together at AOLA. That stands for Advanced Organization in Los Angeles. We were both OT actors. And I accidentally sent her an email or replied to an email one day, basically asking her out. And I heard back from her either at the OT committee or via email that, sorry, things are complicated, you know, thanks, but I can't, I have a boyfriend. And that boyfriend might very well have been fucking Tom Cruise at the time. I'm not saying she would have dated me anyways, probably not, but I just, it was funny because she was being weird and uh, she also had to break up with her boyfriend because the church told her, showed her folders that, look, he's cheating on you, therefore you should go with Tom Cruise. It was a whole setup. And this is part of the auditions that many people went through including Scarlett Johansson. Um, I do believe that this is a true story, by the way, despite what Scarlett says. And we'll listen to a little clip from the guy who you know claims to have seen this, but he definitely did audition for Wives. And it was, of course, as we said earlier, under the guise of, hey, this could be Mission Impossible part, whatever, um, or this could be some movie role with Tom Cruise. Obviously, they're not told that they're auditioning to be someone's wife. That's why Scarlett would say something like this. Scarlett Johansson denies demeaning claim she auditioned to date Tom Cruise. Scarlett Johansson is fighting back against a claim that she auditioned to date Tom Cruise following a split from Nicole Kidman. And then we'll listen to a little clip here. Scarlett Johansson is denying a former Scientologist claim that she auditioned to date Tom Cruise following a split from Nicole Kidman. Brandon Ty, who was raised in the Church of Scientology, appeared on Megyn Kelly's NBC show Wednesday. He told the host that while serving as a member of Cruz's Scientology security unit, he came across reports of women who auditioned to be in a relationship with the actor, one of which he claims was Johansson. Did she want the job? Uh, <laughs> that particular report didn't say that. It just simply said that it didn't go well. Ty explained that he only saw the reports after they were accidentally sent to his printer and said he just recalled Johansson because hers was the only name he recognized. He added, another actress, Erica Christensen, had to disconnect from Scarlett Johansson because it didn't go well. That was in that report. Following Ty's Megyn Kelly Today appearance, Johansson said in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, the very idea of any person auditioning to be in a relationship is so demeaning. I refuse for anyone to spread the idea that I lack the integrity to choose my own relationships. Only a man, aka Brendan Ty, would come up with a crazy story like- Again, I would say that's for PR moves, and obviously she wasn't told that she was auditioning to be Tom Cruise's wife. It was under the guise of a movie role starring Tom Cruise. And these auditions, by the way, were held at Celebrity Center. Like that. Apart from Johansson, the Church of Scientology also denied Ty's claim regarding his role with Cruz. Karen Pow from the Church of Scientology International told Kelly, Brendan Ty was a Church of Scientology flag service. Karen Pow's the OSA slash PR operative of Scientology that's wheeled out there um, on Scientology's behalf to sound like a complete moron in discrediting allegations. 
organization Security Guard slash Night Watchman from 2002 to 2009. The access he boasts of having was largely limited to viewing security cameras from a guard booth. He was removed from that position for dereliction of duty. However, Ty's accusation surrounding Johansson and Cruz is not the first time an alleged dating process for the actor has been rumored. According to a Vanity Fair article published in 2012, members of Scientology underwent an audition process to see if they were a suitable match for Cruz. Actress not Boniad That's Nazanin, the one we were just talking about. She's a really cool chick, by the way. She should never have been a Scientologist. He was reportedly selected and was in a relationship with the actor from November 2004 to January 2005. For more on this story, head to... Okay, so it's funny because Scarlett comes up in uh, recent news. Let's just see what she has to say here, if there's anything relevant. Scarlett Johansson is fighting back against a claim that she auditioned to date Tom Cruise following the split from Nicole Kidman. Quote, the very idea of any person auditioning to be in a relationship is so demeaning. Yeah, I understand, but that's not what you're auditioning for. I refuse for anyone to spread the idea, because it hurts my acting career, that I lack the integrity to choose my own relationships. Only a man, aka Brendan Teach, would come up with such a crazy story like that, as we just heard. And Megan Kelly, who ever the flip-flopper on one day she's pro-Scientology and one day she's supporting Grant Cardone, Scientologist extraordinaire. While appearing on NBC's Megan Kelly Today on Wednesday, Tiggy, however you pronounce that, said that while serving as a member of Cruz's Scientology security unit, he came across reports of women who auditioned to be in a relationship with the actor, one of whom was Johansson. Tiggy explained that he saw the reports after they were accidentally sent to his printer and they recalled only Johansson's name uh, before... Uh, Johannes's name because hers was the only one he recognized. Another actress, Erica Christensen, more to say on her probably in a future video, um, had to disconnect from Scarlett Johansson because it didn't go well. That was in that report, Tiggy said. The Church of Scientology, of course, also denied Tiggy's claims regarding her role with Cruz. And here she is. Um, Apparently, this was only uh, a month ago, looking to kind of get back in Tom Cruise's good graces. And apparently, he's looking for a certain project for her as well. Is there someone on your list that you have yet to work with that you would love to in the future? You mean an, an actor? Um, Tom Cruise. I'd love to work with Tom Cruise. Can we pitch that? What? Yes, please do. Is there some? Okay, and here's um, Tom Cruise's response. Tom Cruise. I'd love to work with Tom Cruise. Can we pitch that? What? Yes, please do. It'd be great. She's so charismatic, so talented. I'd like to find something that that just celebrates all of her talent. She's both physical, she could do comedy, she could- You guys know how weird he talks when he comes to just people or relationships in general? There's something very robotic or kind of out of touch about the whole thing. Just the way he talks is a little creepy in my opinion do drama she's incredibly cinematic of course tom cruise is very known for his high-flying dangerous stunts but i've been wanting to make a movie with her she is enormously talented so charismatic versatile has great physical ability obviously be, that's i am looking for something with us okay so that's basically it now we can get into um winding down this podcast by watching a five minute clip of Scientology featured in movies and TV. Scientology has often been the butt of many jokes all throughout its history, starting at the very beginning. And I just picked out some of the clips. Obviously it's not all of them, but um, I threw together some clips and I'll try to um, decipher or talk about some of these shows um, as we cover this. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist. And it's something I had to start out with Tom Cruise. Actually, let me turn off the music for this, my friends. Okay, here we go. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist. And it's something that you have to earn. And because a Scientologist does. He has the ability to create new and better realities and improve conditions. It's okay. His work in the Mest universe was done. I'm sorry, uh, Mest? Okay, that you guys might know, recognize as um, Haley Joel Osment from the movie The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. And he plays the fucking best Scientologist ever on a TV show. I mean, he definitely got the beingness of this character. Listen to this gibberish he spews out to the late Alan Arkin, RIP. By the way, if you haven't seen The Kaminsky Method, I think it came out 2017, 2018. There's three seasons, and Scientology is an integral although not the main 
point of it all throughout the series, it's definitely worth watching. It's a great series in my opinion, and the Scientology parts are hilarious. Create new and better realities and improve conditions. It's okay. His work in the messed universe was done. I'm sorry, uh, messed? Matter, energy, space, and time. Ah. We call it messed. Ah. But there's no reason to be griefy. Greg is a fully exteriorized operating Phaeton. If anything, his meat body was holding him back from fully mocking up his postulates. And after... I'm not even going to bother to try to translate that. This is Boston Legal with James Spader, and they're talking about the infamous OT3 level. You go through all the stages. Uh, you become an operating Phaeton. 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 That's right. And OTs, as they're called, are said to be able to communicate with animals, move inanimate objects, leave their bodies at will. You hope to do that? One day. And you would be right to be cynical. Do you, Goldie, do you understand um, what the hell is actually being said here? I guess the Scientology watchers will know, but in the comments afterwards, 10 bucks if you can um, decode what Haley is uh, rambling on about, about mess bodies and such. Let's put that to the test, Goldie, shall we? But what if it's true? What if freed of our past trauma, our full potential as spiritual beings is restored? What if we discovered the truth of who we are? Immortal beings who are smarter, wiser, more joyful, more loving than anything we could have imagined. Reach out your hand and follow me. All right, I'm going to take this back a little bit. This video is up and they have it copyright claimed, but that doesn't mean that they can take it down. So I swear if I get copy claimed, because Saturday Night Live is super, um, they don't want you to use their shit. But like I said, I use just enough for this video. If this part does get taken out after this broadcast, you can find this on the channel under Scientology featured in movies and TV. And this next part is from Saturday Night Live, this amazing music video that they did spoofing one of Scientology's videos called Neurotology. Reach out your hand and follow me. I have the code, the code to the key. The key to the secret, the secret of space. It's Neurotology. Read the book I gave you. What book? Diuretics. Signs and matter over mind. Uh-uh. Well, you better read it. And quick. How many of you remember Repo Man and how many of you saw the Dianetics reference? Change your life. Found it in the Maserati and got the hips. You know what I mean? That's obviously in reference to the Dianetics book. Dianetics is called The Modern Science of Mental Health. This is called Diuretics, The Science of Matter Over Mind. Obviously, in wisdom traditions, you'd want to have mind over matter. That's what you'd be going for. Um, it's hilarious that you'd be going for matter over mind, which is basically the situation we face today as humans. A lot of people don't realize what's really going on. It's all part of a cosmic unconsciousness. You eat a lot of acid, Miller, back in the hippie days? Now this is called TR0, and its purpose is to teach you how to be comfortable in front of another person without doing anything. That means no twitching, scratching, thinking, talking, just sitting and being. No matter what is said between the subjects, we do not react. Okay? No matter what is said. When I read it, I, you know, I just went, Poof. this is it. This is exactly it. Come on, you can do it. Don't think. Just do it. Doris. By the way, I don't know if you guys heard that, but there is a little bit of Scientology in that Top Gun movie. Don't think, Deke, just do it. And other little phrases I would suggest for um, Tom Cruise's penning ideas um, based on his, uh, you know, trying to get little Scientology ideas across here and there in his movies. You can do it. Don't think. Just do it. Doris. That's it. Doris. 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 Doris, see? You miss her? Huh? Do you miss Doris? Say your fucking name again, I swear to God. Doris. I swear to fucking God. I'm uncomfortable. That's okay. Just continue. Those are the training routines we've talked about a lot, and here comes the Seinfeld part. No! <laughs> I, I didn't mean anything by it. I don't even know how Ron Hubbard. I, I didn't know you were with that group. It's the same fucking wall. Nothing. Nothing. That's what I feel. Nothing. Okay, 
I see that's anger, which is a little higher on the emotional tone scale than Beat it. We'll get you into a few more courses. Up to level seven. No, I don't want to pay for any more fucking courses. This course. is the boys. And another one that I just thought of is, um, did you guys ever see that thing with Aaron Paul called The Path? where he basically imitates David Miscavige. That's another amazing series that I forgot to put in here. Based, it's based on Scientology. We'll get you into a few more courses. Up to level seven. No, I don't want to pay for more fucking courses. Deep, please come. I signed over my bank account to you. I filled out all those fucking children's workbooks. I married some weirdo. I, I did everything you asked. And when I found out that we're all just fucking space bores, I didn't laugh. I did everything you asked. Because you said you'd get me back in the seven. You fucking promised. I just wanted to remind you. When he said you'd get us back into seven, you promised. That's in reference, I would suggest, to getting back on the level or OT7, as they call it in Scientology. I just wanted to remind you that I am a flag trained class eight auditor and I can help you process your grief. I don't need any. See, how funny is that, though? No, they don't. Chuck Lorre, the creator of this, was a Scientologist. So it takes somebody like him to actually say a flag trained class A auditor. Obviously, most television watchers, even if they're into Scientology, you won't know what the hell that means, but that's fucking funny that he actually included that level of detail in Fucking it. promised. I just wanted to remind you that I am a flag trained class A auditor and I can help you process your grief. I don't need any help, but thank you. Suppressed emotional pain can manifest as a physical ailment. Robbie, I'm glad Scientology has helped you uh, be all you can be. No, ask the Marines. Um, either way, just leave me the fuck alone. And am I going to look at that guy or am I too afraid because I have my own out ethics to put in someone else's ethics? And that's all it comes down to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, no, why would you do that? We are in the middle of a battle that's a trillion years in the making and it's bigger than the book of us. This is obviously from the master and there's been suggestions that because Philip Seymour Hoffman portrayed L. Ron Hubbard, he was perhaps taken out. That is actually a possibility, but there's not, I haven't seen enough evidence to prove that. Not taking him out in the way of murdering him, but setting him up to get back on drugs or maybe an overdose or some such. If they did take him out, it would be in some sneaky, multi-buffered way where it wouldn't go back to Scientology. I'm just saying, there's no proof, but uh, there's some interesting stuff surrounding that. Maybe we'll do a video on that at one point. You this shit up. You this shit up. You don't know what you're talking about. There's one bright side to this. One day, you're going to die. And when you end up in hell, at least it'll be a step up from this place. That, of course, being the, the infamous Battlefield Earth. I'm not sure to, uh, John Travolta ever fully recovered from that. And on Rotten Tomatoes, it was said to be one of the worst movies of all time. It's kind of a cult classic. It's one of those campy things where they tried so hard to be serious. But if you watch it after uh, a few pot brownies, it's actually really good at just how bad it freaking is. What are you talking about? There's one bright side to this. One day you're going to die. And when you end up in hell, at least it'll be a step up from this place. That we are static awareness, senior to matter, energy, space, and time. Then we win. I know that to be true for myself, and now my grandpa knows it too. Although, without having crossed LRH's bridge of total freedom, he will quickly be sucked back into the hellish merry-go-round of birth and death. <laughs> Thank you. Religion and science intertwined. Aliens live inside of our minds. A billion-year contract we have signed. It all makes sense to me. Free. Free for a moment. And then it was captured by an invader force bent on turning you to the darkest way. You've been implanted with a push-pull mechanism that keeps you fearful of authority and destructive. We are in the middle of a battle that's a trillion years in the making, and it's bigger than the both You're of us. We're making this shit up. Okay, that's the end of that. Again, link will be in the description box if you guys want to check out any of these videos. And as we close off, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat and we'll take them up. And I want to give, as usual, a shout out to the people who helped out this week to um, support the channel. We're not monetized. We never will be. It's kind of like a practice what you preach thing. I don't like fucking commercials and I don't like having to, um, to jump around all the rules and watching your language and saying unalive rather than suicide or sexual assaulted rather than pedophile. I don't like to worry about any of that shit. And so 
the only way to support the channel if you wish to you don't have to um is this where there's a link in the description box and it's called a coffee page just wanted to shout out the people who donate donated um this last week eight points yet again thank you very much dude i appreciate it tampa b man lizzie blue sky gal 777 multiple contributions thank you my friend i appreciate it and then jenna from cali became a member we have memberships like i said it's basically just to support the channel one day when i'm not lazy i'm sure i'll set up content and do more it's kind of operates like a patreon page but it's enough just keeping the content going as it is all in due time sjj thanks my friend and cali blue um and jenna from cali also um contributed in addition to membership so let let us head out of here and see if we got any questions um question from earlier i do try to star these as we go along don and everybody else um so i am trying to pay attention as much as possible did you know manu tupor tupi i don't even know the, how to pronounce that let alone who that was he was a scientologist actor and scientology acting teacher really Don, can you let me know more about who you're talking about? I've never heard that name, and I'd be really curious, especially since you said he's an acting teacher. As far as I know, the only people that do acting or that that teach, only two out of three are left as Scientology front groups, and those would be um, the Acting Center, which we talked about with Mitch Brisker um, a few days ago in an interview. He gives a lot of detail about that. Milton Casales' Beverly Hills Playhouse, which, as I mentioned before, was taken over by an apostate. Um, I think Alan Barton or something like that. So it's not a Scientology front school anymore. And Bobby Lyons, this amazing acting teacher that I went to. We've talked about him quite a bit on the channel and the series. He still is. Um, so beware. <laughs> Nasty, what's up, my man? Doug, will you go have a margarita? Yes, I will, dude. Especially, are you in LA, Nasty? I would love to um, hang out with me the next time. Okay, the next time you're in Los Angeles. Absolutely, dude. In fact, if you want to email me, there's a link in the description box. Just hit me up. I'll give you my phone number and we can make easy contact. I'd love to hang out with you, dude. Andrew, what's up, my man? Doug, please keep, sh oh, dude, thanks, man. Please keep shining your light on these dark, shadow of cult programming it's definitely a part of issues in governments across the world absolutely i've said a million times scientology is a microcosm of what's happening on the macrocosm although it's a condensed version in other words i i do see they were all born into a cult basically it's just more extreme in scientology and that's the one benefit that i got out of growing up in a cult because when i got out what I was learning about deep programming how the mind works hypnosis and all that shit, i was literally seeing it everywhere and I'm not so sure that that would have happened if I was super integrated in the quote unquote real world. So that was a gift, quote unquote, of growing up in Scientology. And it does relate to the wider world. That's why I try to go down a lot of rabbit holes, jumping off of Scientology, why it gets kind of dark and why it's nice to do some of these um, lighter stories once in a while. Um, but that that is the goal. And I really appreciate that, Andrew. Okay, my friends, it doesn't look like there's any more um, questions. Uh, what's up, Creepy? Purple ear. Smoke them if you got them. Let's go out with the cigarette, my friends. I'll turn up the music. See if there's any more questions, and then we'll end off. And we'll see you soon, because there's a bunch of shit coming up. Especially since I finally had this camera working, crashing. None of this shit should be buffering. If it is, I'll fix it. But finally, I don't have to worry anymore while doing these freaking live streams. And Goldie, thank you for being here, man. I don't know how you are able to moderate everybody's channel. Um... I'm sure you have multiple tabs open up at the same time, but you are much appreciated. Could not do any of this without you. And caveman. I've noticed you are, a, seem to be a new person around here. I've been seeing you around. So welcome my friend. Okay. A little bit of music here. We can only do presets. Otherwise I totally put in like death metal and, or like some actual real cool music, which would probably get me a, uh, copyright claimed but um nonetheless it would be really nice sooner or later if they um if they kind of upgrade this shit i'll tell you what what we have as options chill which is what you hear right now down tempo lounge hip-hop lofi chill hop ambient future pop like i said they don't have death metal yet but i'm sure they're working on that okay my friends time to roll out of here like i said i'll see you soon and um thanks for joining us man this is a lot of fun
Until the next time, take care. Now here is no Ron Hubbard. And you find in each and every case, you're finding the phenomenon of entities, communications, space ships, other planets, locations, beingness in other states, and all of this, and you find this to be a consistent condition, you have fulfilled this definition of the mass universe.